Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Burning Peak, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the IS-3A, which stands for Auto Loader, which is interesting because it's actually an auto reloader, but that makes it incredibly dangerous. And I would say that this has one of the most capable guns in the game. The more you shoot, the more DPM you get. And I know that sounds pretty self-explanatory. I mean, isn't that the case for any tank? Yes. But usually, when it comes to auto-reloaders, the more you shoot, the less DPM you get. You know, if you're in a Progetto 65, the more you shoot into the clip, the lower and lower your effective damage per minute is. But in this tank, it's a reverse auto-reloader. So the more you shoot, the faster your reload gets. You have an 11-second base reload on this vehicle. Your second shell is 13.8, and your third shell is 16.5. So, essentially, your first and second shell are pretty quick to the reload, but your last one, yeah, that's going to take a while. Especially because it's going to take upwards of, what, almost 40 seconds to get the whole clip loaded? That's quite a bit of time. Thankfully, it's only 11 seconds, as I said, to shoot it on single shot. And if we compare that to a vehicle like my K2, which is also equipped, we'd see the K2 with a bounty rammer is around 11.78 seconds. So essentially, you have more DPM than a K2 with also two more shells that you can throw on, which is kind of crazy. So what are the downsides of this vehicle? Well, first of all, it's only got five degrees of gun depression, which is quite bad. And it's also uh, pretty inaccurate. 0.38 dispersion, awful 2.83 seconds of aiming time. It's not good in that regard. So there are definitely going to be characteristics that you're not going to find too enjoyable about this tank, but it's got good armor, which is obviously quite nice, and it also has decent mobility. I'm not running a turbo or anything. We're able to reach a top speed of 40 and reverse at 15, which is actually pretty solid. So we're going to take a look at two battles I played back to back in the IS-3A, and you're going to see just how capable this tank is. Here we are on Tundra in a very solid matchup, an all tier 8 game. This is what I personally love to see. As I've said many times in the past on the channel, I hate plus 2 minus 2 matchmaking. I think it's cringe. I think it takes away a lot of the fun in the game. And when you get an equal tiered matchup, especially when you're in a vehicle like this, you feel so much more powerful and you feel like you can make such a bigger impact in the game because you can. You have more DPM when you're equal tier rather than fighting higher tier tanks. You have more penetration to your opponents, which is always nice. So here we are in a very solid matchup and we are going to make our way over towards the mountain pass and hopefully we're going to be able to get some good shells out i was thinking about going over towards the medium flank but the problem is we don't feature gun depression and you need gun depression to work that spot because if you get pushed off that hill you're basically kind of screwed so let me just fix my camera there you go now it's on the correct side of the map but yeah, uh, if you go over towards the hull down spot, there's just not much you can do there in a vehicle like this once you get pushed off the hill. So I'd much rather play my IS-3A over towards the mountains where we can easily work this spot no matter what happens. We have a lot of support as well. We've got two KV-5s. I've got my two mate in his finally upgraded ISM. So ideally, we should be able to hold pretty dang well. We got the BZ-166 in front of us. Okay, well, that's not too much of an issue. I'm just going to work my way on out. I'm not going to load gold unless I have to, especially in an auto reloader. It's very annoying to have to constantly load gold. The only problem is I wanted to be the first tank in line here, but you'll notice my five degrees of gun depression is making it very awkward to work this position because the way the corner is designed here, you need a little bit of gun depression to work it. You can see if I pause the replay for a moment that the uh, corner is kind of angled like this. And because of that, it's literally wedging my tank up in a way that I can't work it, which is very annoying. It's not the end of the world, but it's definitely a little annoying. So we're going to aim it on the top of the BZ-166. There you go. And we aim it on the other BZ. I, I pointed out to my team and I said, why the heck does their team have three BZ-166? Like, it makes no sense. It would make sense if our team had one and their team had maybe two. But, like, three, it's just so weird to see that because it doesn't even make sense. But my two mate gets a nice shell out. We're still reloading. The nice thing is, if we can't work the spot all too well, I can just wait for my shells to get into the barrel, and then I can work it uh, after that. So we got the enemy IS-3 poking. My two mate pokes wide, unfortunately doesn't get the pen out. We're gonna aim it right on the track wheel 
of the IS-6. We pen the first shot. Ah, he backs up the moment we press the fire button, so we're not able to get the second one out. But that's alright. We've dealt 1700 damage. We're holding. And we've done some decent work on our opponents as it is already. We can see there's a lot going on in mid as well. Our poor T-28 has about four vehicles on him right now, which I can't do much against. My ISM gets the clear, so it's just a BZ-166 and a stock IS-3 up against us, which is obviously not that challenging. So I'm reloading right now. I'm aiming it on this BZ hatch and not able to hit it just yet. Again, I don't really have the gun depression for it. But, I mean, we got the lower plate of that AMX, and uh, that's a free 370 damage into his tank. Can't complain all too much there. We're going to reload again We're at 2,000 damage now, and our KV-5 is making the play. I said, you know what? I got you, bro. It's so annoying when you have teammates that make a play, or let's say you're that teammate that makes the play, and you have full health players like me and my teammate next to him, and just sit there and watch you die. It happens a lot in World of Tanks because people have that, ooh, I got a camp mentality. So I'm glad this KV-5 made the play, and I'm glad I was able to support him making this play because he's going to ram the BZ. I'm going to get a shell into the BZ. I was going to shoot the Scorpion, but I was like, heck, I'll shoot the BZ. My teammate gets the clear on the enemy BZ-166. And just like that, this was a pretty solid game. The Amex slightly taps the KV-5, dies because of that. We shoot the Scorpion, and we're already up to 3,600 damage. We haven't even shot gold. We have fired all APCR, and we're at 3,600 damage. It shows that you don't need to load gold to do well. But, unfortunately, at this time, we only have one shell that we can load. So, basically, I'm going to have to shoot gold after I fire this shell. Which is a little annoying, but not the end of the world. We're going to name it on the roof unfortunate if we had fired gold there it might depend i don't know if we hit the hatch of the ts5 it's hard to really tell but oh well we're not going to get that final juicer amount of damage out into his tank but thankfully our 270 mils heat pen is plenty to cut through the side of his tank that is 4100 damage dealt and a very solid result at that so all that's left at this point is a type 59 and a scorpion g so we are going to speed up this replay just a little bit so that we can make our way over towards the type 59 we can see the scorpion misses me and now we have the type in front of us now the is3a features the hull of an is3 so it doesn't have a lot of armor you're going to get penned by a lot of shells in the hull we aim it on the type the first one does not go where i want it to misses very annoying but thankfully we get the second pen out we get the third pen so not the biggest deal ever the problem is now we have, oh boy, the tiger shoots me in the rear. That tiger shooting me just ruined what could have been a very solid result. Thankfully, we still get a shell into the scorpion. But yeah, the tiger was actually shooting me basically untouched back there. It's not the biggest deal ever. We are at 5,000 damage in this game. And funny enough, we didn't even need gold. We basically could have played this entire game only shooting APCR, but I had a decent amount of gold loaded because of the fact that I just am so used to spamming heat rounds in any game I play. But that was a solid game. 5,000 damage dealt and a victory at that. So let's take a look at the post-game results. As we can see, we indeed pulled out a mastery, which is always quite nice, picking up 1,547 base XP. We managed to get four kills and easily to top on the team, farming the entire way through. That Tiger actually did pretty good on the enemy team as well, 4,700. Not a bad result, but we can definitely see where the auto-reloading capabilities of the IS-3A are absolutely demolishing towards your opponents. Here we are on Serene Coast. Once again, a solid matchup, only having a couple tier 9s being an IS-32 and a Straton K up against us, which are really the only heavies. I don't even need to worry about most of their heavies or honestly a lot of their hull down tanks because they are probably going to go towards the hill. And we're in an IS-3A. Again, I don't have gun depression, so there's no way I'm bringing my vehicle with 5 degrees gun depression over to a spot that requires at least 7 or 8 degrees to be a fairly effective spot. So instead, we are going to once again go towards the mountains. But that works out fine, because I have my teammate in the ISM as well, and he's going to head over there. We can see that, indeed, this game, he still has the stock turret on his... Actually, no, that might actually be the upgraded turret. He just doesn't have a lot of HP, I'm surprised. But uh, it might just because of the fact that he doesn't have the field mods, which probably gives more health. We do have a 7.52, which is coming over here to support us. A little surprising, honestly. Usually you expect to see a 7.52, which is a super strong haul-down vehicle, going over towards the hill. But 
That is fine with me. We are going to start this game by crossing through the water. This camo just looks so nice. I love the way the Falcon stands out in gold. It's fantastic. We can see the T25 or T2065 Patriot spotted in the open here. And I'm just going to drive up. And this spot's perfect because we can literally hide our tank behind the bushes. We shouldn't be spotted. We get one nice shell overmatching his track wheel. That's not what you want, unfortunate. And there you go. Okay, not bad, not bad. I will take two pens. We low rolled both, only dealing about 740, but still not that big of a deal as it is. I know that my two mates can out-reload me. He finishes them off, and we are going to go wide. My loadout for this vehicle, I am not running a turbo. I'm running an aiming device. I'm running V-stabs, and I'm running improved hardening. I think that's honestly what I like a lot for my uh, auto loaders. And I might start running it more for my, I don't know, it's so tricky to decide whether you want DPM or accuracy on your heavies. Because DPM is great, and it can help you in a lot of situations, but obviously being able to have more accuracy means that you'll hit more shots. Especially in a vehicle like this where you need that accuracy, it's very important. So, I don't know, I'm kind of back and forth, but right now not much is going on. You can see I haven't spotted anything. We're just making our way through, and I was like, wait a sec, if I haven't spotted anything, there's no way they're over here. This game is a great example on why plus two minus two is awful for the game. Let's say that I'm in my tier eight and they have like a Jagdpanzer or a 4005 and they're unspotted. If that was the case, there's no way I would ever make this play here because I have the chance of literally being one shot. But because I'm in an IS-3 and I'm only up against a couple tier 9s, I know that I can make this aggressive play. And even though my Caliban and Object 752 are absolute wimps who are too scared to make a play up here, I am not, and I'm going to make an aggressive play. And because of that, I'm going to punish the enemy. So we take 1,200 off of that Lance and see. Dude is absolutely gone, dusted, out of the game. Just like that, I've already basically killed a full health tank. And now our team is just starting to move up because I've already managed to spot up this flank and see that nothing's here. If I didn't make this play, I wonder how long it would have taken my team to make the play here. And the problem is, the longer you take to make a play on this side of the map, the worse it gets for your other side because the enemy can just sit hold down, they can put pressure on you. If you make pressure on their spawn, they are going to have to start pushing or they're going to lose. So we're going to aim it on the Forest Spirit. There you go. Nice 438 damage shot. We're reloading again. We've got 2,300 damage on our pallet already. And we got the TS-5. I'm going to wait for my second shell to get in the clip before I do anything. 3, 2, 1, and... There you go. We get one pen into the TS-5's lower plate. Two pens. Oh, no, we actually don't pen that one. And uh, well, that's not great. There's a G-Sword that just YOLOs in front of me. But it looks like he kind of gave up. Seems like he's got a damaged Amorak, as we can see. And uh, doesn't look like he wants to do much to me. Oh, no, he does shoot me once. I don't want to be hit by the g so We're going to back up. Now, I'm not sure what dude's doing. But either way, my teammate gets a nice 453 HE into the rear of his vehicle. And we finish him off. We have assisted 1,300 damage at this point. We have dealt 3,200. And we only have two shells left. Which is obviously not the best. But, uh, oh well. We're just going to start heading in. It's not like you really use that last shell as it is. But that is the major problem with these autoloaders is for some reason wargaming really limits their shells i don't know why as i've said this in the past why you're limited by how much ammo you can carry because at the end of the day i'll probably just load either more gold shells or the other i also don't know why my game's lagging so much here maybe it was actually lagging in battle but i don't think it was it's just lagging i don't know whenever i record world of tanks it lags i don't understand why it never lags while i normally play the game i got a 40 90 and a 7950 x 3d so, I have the best everything you can get for a computer right now. It's just really cringe. Either way, as you can see, I decided that, wait a sec, I only have two shells. I'm going to start reloading the clip. And that is exactly what I've done here. We have two shells loaded now. We have the Type 63 all the way in the back. And we're aiming, 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 aiming. Nice. Okay. Easy 380 damage shell into the Type 63. Not bad at all. We're now going to slowly make our way down this hill here. And we got a Stritz von K right in front of us. Okay. Well, that works out perfectly because in one second, boom, we have our shell loaded. We got a 440 damage shot into the Stritz von and a 366, which works out just to be about 800 damage dumped off of his tank. We're at 4,460 damage dealt. We have the UDES 16 right in front, and there you go. Nice 406 roll. We're at 1,600 assisted, 4,800 dealt. That is almost 6,000 combined, which is kind of crazy. 
And uh, actually, it is 6,000 combined. <laughs> so there you have it. I mean, this is the IS-3A, and this is why it's such a good vehicle. It's just always got shells loaded, and it makes you such a dangerous opponent, because even if you're up against higher-tiered players, you're still scary. I mean, even if I was fighting a Tier 10, if it makes a misplay, uh, let's say, like, a Rhino shoots his clip or something, or a Kron, you know, shoots, anything like that, or an IS-7 makes the wrong poke, I can easily dump 1,200 off of that vehicle as long as I have heat loaded. Now, if I don't have heat, I'm not even going to be able to pen, but that's kind of how it works with these Tier 8s. Either way, I had a lot of fun, and I think this showcase is just how good the IS-3A can be. Once again, this second game we played in the IS-3A, we got another ace, netting a crap ton of credits, as we can see, 185,000. Again, not really shooting too much gold. I don't know why, but it just seemed like I didn't have to load much gold rounds. I think the major reason why is, again, we had pretty good matchups here, and uh, getting good matchups means that you have such a bigger advantage and impact in the game. You don't need the spam gold as much. It's just a much more enjoyable experience in general. So yeah, the IS-3A, I had a blast. In this game, I got 1,500 base XP as well. The vehicle is just absolutely crazy to drive. It's super fun to mess around with, and while it does lack gun depression, and while it may lack a lot of hull armor, it makes up for that with the gun, it makes up for that with the good mobility, and it's just an absolutely crazy tank. I definitely enjoyed playing in this vehicle. Uh, currently, when it comes to my statistics in the tank, I'm averaging 3,900 damage for the four games I've played, and obviously, that's bound to go down as I play more battles, but still, kind of crazy crazy when you think about it. So yeah, the IS-3A is an absolute bop. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed playing this tank. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!